Welcome to probably my favorite and best smartphones of 2020. I'm going to start with the cheapest smartphones for as low as like $50 to all the way to the top tier smartphones as high as $2,000. Let's get started. So let's start off with the best phones under $50. So the first one that we're going to be talking about is the Sony Xperia Z3. For around $40, it feels good in the hand and it almost feels like an iPhone 4 but a little bit bigger. It has IP68 water resistance, so if you drop it into a pool or a lake or anything like of any kind of water, then you're completely fine. And it has a pretty respectable Snapdragon 801 and 3 gigabytes of RAM. Now, the phone can record video at 30 FPS, which is actually pretty impressive for this price. The next phone that we're going to be talking about is the Samsung Galaxy A10. Now, you can actually find this for around $50 on eBay.com. Not only does it have a pretty modern design, it doesn't have too many bezels. With about an 80% screen to body ratio, it has a pretty large 3400 mAh battery. Not only that, we're pairing that with Android 10 and One UI 2.0. But the next one is for all the Apple fans out there. This is the iPhone SE, and for only $50, is it is the cheapest you can get into the Apple ecosystem. It is on the latest software of iOS, which is iOS 13. It has pretty good performance with the Apple A9 chip, and as well as 2 gigabytes of RAM. It has a pretty acceptable camera that, rec that can record 4K at 30 FPS. Now that you heard most of the smartphones under $50, we're going to be talking about the smartphones under $150. Let's get started. So the first phone that we're going to be talking about is the Umi DG Power 3 for around $150. Now, not only does this phone have a 6150 milliamp hour battery that can last you almost a week of constant usage, it also has a four camera setup which can record 4K at 30 FPS. Not only that, it can shoot in ultrawide and a macro mode and also has a depth sensor. So this has pretty good camera quality. It has a pretty good MediaTek Helio P60 processor as well as 4GB of RAM and it's very fast and the reason why it's so fast is because it has stock Android 10 which is very clean and nice to see for this price. The next one that we're going to be talking about is also for the, all, all the Apple fans out there. This is the iPhone 7 and for only $130 you can get a very fast phone that is very fast and very speedy with the A10 Fusion chip which is used in the 2019 Apple iPad 7. It also has a very good camera that can record 4K at 30fps. Now the software support will be around for the next at least a couple of years just because it's Apple and their software support is usually pretty good. Now let's talk about the phones that hit the $300 price tag or a little bit less. Let's talk about the OnePlus 6T, which is only $190. It has the cleanest Android experience with the latest version of Oxygen OS. The phone has pretty thin bezels and a pretty modern design. If you look at the phone, it doesn't really have any be bezels. Now also, this is paired with the Snapdragon 845 and up to 8GB of RAM, which is very good for this price point. It has a very fast optical fingerprint scanner, the one, the same one actually in the OnePlus 8 Pro, and it can record 4K at 60fps, which is not what you really see in a under $300 phone. Now, the next phone that we have is the Samsung Galaxy A51, and for only $275, this phone looks extremely new and has a very modern design that almost looks like the flagship Galaxy S20s, and with a screen-to-body ratio of 87.4%, looks like a 2020 flagship phone. It also has a quad camera setup with a 48 megapixel main camera as well as an ultrawide, macro, and depth sensing camera. While it's not the best quality in the world, you certainly won't be disappointed with this camera. 
Not only that, but it's also paired with a fairly large 4000 milliamp hour battery, which yes, you can get a larger size battery, but because of the processor isn't fastest in the world, it makes a good combination and it will get you through several days. Now let's talk about the phones under $500. The first one that we have is the OnePlus 7 Pro, which is around $380, and is actually my main phone right now. I've actually done several reviews on it, and if you want to check that out, I'll leave a link in the description below. Now, um, the display is absolutely spectacular for what you get for the price. Not only does it have a 90Hz refresh rate, it also has a screen, full screen view with no distractions, as it has a pop-up camera and a 1440p display. The processor is flagship level, as it has the year-old Snapdragon 855s, five, and topped with that, it can have up to 12 gigabytes of RAM. The camera, while it isn't flagship level, still has a triple camera setup, which is pretty good, and the ones that you mainly want, such as the ultrawide and the telephoto, unlike the previous ones that I've talked about, which have like maybe a depth sensing and a macro camera instead of the ultrawide in the telephoto. And it can record at 4K at 60 FPS, so I'm not complaining. Also, this phone has the latest version of Oxygen OS, and like I said before, this has the cleanest Android experience. Not only that, but this phone is going to be getting at least another software version, if not more. Also, the phone can charge super fast with 30 watt warp charging. Now, there is no wireless charging, but it's still fine because not a lot of people actually use wireless charging that I know. The next phone that we're going to be talking about is the Huawei P30 Pro, and at $450, the camera is spectacular with a quad camera setup that can do amazing night mode shots that you'd almost think that the picture was taken in the day. Not only that, while it can only take 4K at 30fps video, it basically has lossless zoom. So you'd almost have the same quality from a standard one-time zoom as you would have as a 10-time zoom. You can also charge your phone pretty fast with 40 watt charging. It also has a pretty large 4200 milliamp hour battery, which can last you at least two days of on-screen on time. This was actually proven by Mr. Who's the Boss, and I will leave a link to the video of him living with the Huawei P30 Pro. So, yeah. Now let's talk about the phones for $500 or above. We first have the iPhone 11 Pro at $800. It has an extremely fast A13 Bionic chip, which is even faster than the Snapdragon 865. It has pro-grade cameras that are in some cases better than Sony or Nikon's $2,000 cameras. It has software support that will almost be infinite, so you won't have to worry about this phone losing support anytime soon. It has the best battery as of right now for 2020. And if you want to see a battery comparison, Mr. Who's the Boss made a video on this. So I'll leave a link in the description below. The next phone that we're going to be talking about is the OnePlus 8 Pro for $900. Now this is actually a very recent smartphone, and because of that, it has the latest Snapdragon 865 chip with up to 12 gigabytes of RAM. The phone is now blazing fast with a 120 hertz refresh rate, combining with the latest version of Oxygen, Oxygen OS, it is an amazing experience. The phone finally has wireless charging, and not only that, it is super fast at 30 watts. The phone is IP68 water and dust resistance. So, if you thought that was good, we're going to be talking about the last one. Um, but before I tell you the last one, let me tell you some honorable mentions. Also, make sure to like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content so far. Now, the first honorable mention that we have is the iPhone SE 2020. Now, while this phone has the latest A13 chip and 3GB of RAM, no one has actually done a review on it, and I can't really tell you the full details of this phone. So, that's actually the only reason why I totally could have put this under the $500 price range. The next honorable mention is the LG G6. Now, this phone's actually pretty old, but the phone is actually going to be was going to be part of my best phones under $100, but I realized this phone has LG's very laggy and confusing UI and decided not to put it on the list. 
The last one you may be surprised about is the Galaxy S20, and I'm not just talking about the regular S20, I'm talking about the Ultra, you know, the uh, Plus model. Now, yes, this has a very nice 120Hz refresh rate, and the Snapdragon 865, this phone is way too expensive. Even for someone who wants to spend over $500, there will be way better options. So, this last one, not a lot of people know about, and it's going really under the radar, and surprised why. Now, this last phone is the ZTE Nubia Red Magic 5G, and this is for $599. Now, keep that price in mind. So, this phone is absolutely insane with specs. It has a 144 hertz refresh rate, which no other smartphone in the world has, and a 240 hertz touch response rate. It has the Snapdragon 865 chip and up to 16 gigabytes of RAM. This phone has 5G capabilities, and the phone can record up to 8K at 30 FPS, which is even better than the S20 Ultra, which can only do a limit of 24 FPS. So you may be asking yourself, why is this phone so cheap then? Well, I'll explain why. First of all, yes, this has a 144Hz refresh rate. That doesn't mean it's the prettiest display in the world. It is an AMOLED capacitive touchscreen, but it only has an 82.5 screen to body ratio and only 1080p resolution with a 388 ppi density. And another thing, yes, as it can record up to 8K at 30 FPS, that doesn't mean it's the best quality video in the world. Actually, since the software isn't so great, which is the Red Magic 3.0, I believe, um, UI, it's not great and it hasn't really been optimized and has really bad focusing. Actually, just like the S20 Ultra. But besides that, this is literally the best phone that you could ever get for the price. So anyways guys, thank you so much for watching and make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you enjoyed this content, then um, please leave a comment down below if you did. And um, did you agree with my results, you know, um, for the best smartphones? What is your current smartphone? So let me know in the comments below. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching.